Well, it's finally happened. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has been confirmed as head of health and human services by Congress. Thank you, Congress. We're going to have to deal with a big mess over the next four years. How big of a mess, you might ask? Well, let me just give you a hint by reading you a section from Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s book about Anthony Fauci that he wrote during the pandemic. And I'm going to read from a section called Miasma versus Germ Theory. Parts of the section read, Germ theory aficionados, in contrast, blame disease on microscopic pathogens. When a starving African child succumbs to measles, the miasmists attribute the death to malnutrition. Germ theory proponents, aka virologists, blame the virus. The miasmist's approach to public health is to boost individual immune response. No, Robert, when a child anywhere dies of measles, it's because they died of measles. It is a no-brainer to say that certain things predispose certain individuals to having a greater risk of severe outcomes from said infectious diseases, but it's ultimately because of the infectious disease at the end of the day. And people who are generally healthy can and do still succumb to infectious diseases. Later in the section, he writes, On his deathbed, the victorious Pasteur is said to have recanted, quote, Bechamp is right, declaring, quote, the microbe is nothing. The terrain is everything. This is a fake story that people who deny germ theory always like to tell. It supposedly goes that Louis Pasteur, the guy who kind of laid the foundation for germ theory, recanted germ theory on his deathbed, and that Bechamp, a champion of terrain theory rather than germ theory, was correct. This never happened. There's absolutely no evidence at all that this ever happened. It's completely fabricated. But Kennedy retells it here because he is doubting germ theory. The illustrations on the following page pose an indomitable challenge to germ theory's central dogma and stark support for miasma's approach to medicine. He then displays graphs showing that deaths due to certain infectious diseases were declining prior to the outroll of vaccines in America. However, what these graphs do not show you is a situation like measles, where prior to vaccination, there were about 500 deaths in children in America per year and about 40,000 hospitalizations, many of them resulting in severe brain swelling, which could lead to permanent damage. Now, we don't have any of those thanks to vaccination. And what about these trends in developing countries, Robert, or just countries that didn't roll vaccines out at the same time as America? Hmm, let's take a look. Oh, look at that. It doesn't matter when you roll out vaccines. They still coincide very strongly with a sharp drop in both cases and severe outcomes of the infectious diseases that they're meant to protect. That's because germs can make us sick. Germ theory does not posit that all disease comes from germs, but germs definitely can cause disease, and we should do something about that if we can. And all of these wacky ideas and more are rooted in the fact that he doubts germ theory. Here's a real fucking controversial take. Maybe we don't elect people who doubt germ theory to the highest office of human health in the United States. Maybe think about that one, Congress, before you vote on whoever the hell you vote for next. It's going to be a long four years of medical misinformation and blatant science denial that scientific communicators such as myself have already dealt with for the past several years online. And now it's going to be just more on the forefront. So be sure to follow along if you want to see all of the garbage that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. says and learn why it's wrong. Stay informed, keep advocating for yourself, and good luck to us all.